Welcome to Talking Live. I'm Dr. Robbie Ludwig right here in Starshot Studio. And today we have a huge international superstar, Jay Sean. I'm What's sure you've heard of him. It's the only time that I got a little bit of credit from my kids. Oh, yeah. Like, you're a little cool. Not Became, real cool. Oh, oh. Real cool. well, that's bad for me then. You should have been super cool if they said my name. Well, I'm, but, but I don't <laughs> oh, yeah, but in general, no. <laughs> and his gorgeous wife, Tara Natalie, who is also his manager, we're going to talk about a lot of things because Jay is a very interesting person with a very interesting background. They mm. both are. Aww. And really, you two are more than what meets the eye, even though you're beautiful to look at. Oh, background. <laughs> now, listen, I like to be around beauty. I'm yeah. sure you've heard it before. <laughs> um, and, and Jay, you really have like a lot of firsts in your mm. history. Yeah. So you were, let me get this right because I'm not going to be able to remember it all. The best-selling urban artist in the history of the UK. Yep. You were one of the first Asian pop artists from London, from UK, yeah. to sign with an American label. Yeah. Label. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you've had a lot of like top 100 billboards. Yeah, there's been a bunch of things. Yeah. I mean, you should call yeah. my mom. She's usually bragging all to right. it. She's got the whole Tara list. Colin. Yeah, she's got the list. She'll tell all her friends. Uh -huh. Oh, my son. No, she doesn't. She's actually very humble. My mom's very sweet. Um, it, definitely a lot of firsts. You're right. Yeah. First number one for first number one for Cash Money in the um, on the Billboard 100. Yeah. For the first number one for Republic Records. It, so you had a lot of numbers. It's yeah, really incredible, it's, and I feel like you know music is very generational. Oh yeah. And I think you appeal to multiple generations because, quite honestly, I don't like a lot of the music that's right. out there. I really don't. <laughs> yeah. But your music is special. Thank you. And I think it's in part because you tell a story. Yeah. In your music. I like to, and also, you know, the, when I'm writing songs. What I think about is this um, as a writer, and I, you're a writer, so you you know you know all about this. It's like know your audience, right? Yeah. Um, so for me, I try to think about what is the one thing. I'm I'm, I'm a British-born Asian, you know, an Indian guy, but born in England, and yet I'm here in America doing sort of pop R&B music, and I'm thinking, what can I write about that will transcend all barriers, whether it's mm -hmm. race, religion, uh, age, you know, gender. And so a lot of my stuff has to do with either love mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, uh, seeking love, being in love, losing love, whatever. Because that is the one thing that is... It's that universal. We, it's, you know, it's across the it's board. It's universal. Right? And it's also primal. Yeah. It really is. Mm -hmm. It's Absolutely. what helps us to survive. We don't survive without love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and you know that because you have a child and also Tara is expecting, even though she is carrying so well, eight weeks? Yeah, we're eight weeks oh, away. Yeah, eight I can't weeks away. It. it must be the yoga. It is the right, yoga. We'll get into that 100%. later. We'll get into that later. Yeah. Your birth name. Yes, it's very hard to pronounce. It's hard to pronounce. Yeah. I'm like, I said before the show, I was like, I'm so grateful that Jay changed his name. It was like, he changed it just for me. Yeah. Um, so I could say it, but I love how you actually, so tell me your birth name. So my, my birth name is Kamaljeet. Um, and it's, uh, it's okay, so it's funny. So with Indians, I don't know if any of you guys got Indian friends or if you're Indian yourself when you're watching. Um, it's a funny thing, right? We can have a, a long traditional Indian name mm -hmm. like mine, Kamaljeet. You get to England. When we first got here, my granddad, his name was Jeevan Singh. He got there, tried to get a job. They're like, nah, mate, I can't say that. I'm calling you Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. he's like, okay, I'm Bobby then. And yeah. so everybody would... An Indian guy, if you've ever met an Indian dude whose name is Steve, you're thinking in your head, there's no way it's Steve. Right, it's right. not Steve. Yeah. It's like Gurdial Singh. But they're like, yeah, can't say that, Steve. So yeah. that's what happened. So like with me, uh, it just became, you know, it became Nick actually was, was what they used to call me at home. But then when I started rapping, uh, my rapper name was Nikki J. Uh -huh. And then everybody started calling me J. Uh -huh. And that's how J came about. And then Sean is completely made up as well. Now, I love, there's more of a backstory yeah. to Sean. Yeah. Because your grandmother actually yeah. gave you that name, which means something very special in Punjabi. Punjabi. which is my, yeah, my mother, well, my, my parents' mother tongue. Okay. Um, and Sha the word Sean means like a shining light, like uh -huh. a, a bright light, like a star, yes. right? So I used to be so Sean, affectionately called me Sean. And that became, yeah, Jay Sean. Yeah. So there I, you go. I love it. 
most people may not know unless they're a super fan of mm -hmm. yours. I certainly didn't know it about you. I just knew you, you know, from your music right. and the great videos and the fantastic people that you have worked with. Um, is that you at one point were interested in medicine and actually were in medical school? I you was were a smart straight A student. You I went to was. private school with you, Grant. I did. Yeah. We're not the same year. Not the same year. Yeah, he's, I don't want to... he's much, much older. Yeah, yeah, just... He really is much, much older. Just clarify yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Although we love you, but you know. I do. We love him, but he's older. I, I did have a little fan, fanboy moment when I met Hugh Grant. Because we had like a little old school reunion. Yeah. It was amazing. Is it, was it like amazing. all the famous people from your school? Uh, yeah, and then like, like some, yeah, and then like the super scholars. Yeah. And people have gone to win Nobel Prizes mm -hmm. and all sorts. And um, yeah, but, but what were you talking about before that? The, the, you were the school, yeah, school. so I was in medical school. Um, I was, I did always want, I did want to be a doctor, like from the beginning, I did. Mm. Uh, in school, I was absolutely fascinated by the scientists, the mind and the body. And uh, I, was, I was good at it. Yeah. And, and I studied hard at it because I enjoyed it. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's certain things that I, I studied and I was like, mm, you're it good at it. I, I, yeah, so for me, I enjoyed it. So I got into medical school and I was there, but I also <laughs> enjoyed singing yeah. and writing. And, I couldn't understand for the life of me why, you know, I couldn't give up the music. It's mm. medicine is hard enough. It's like to, to put it's in really that time. Hard. Yeah, it's really hard. And I'm there one minute and I'm writing about mitochondria and then I'm coming home and I'm writing raps and songs and I'm going, yeah. what is going on here? Even I couldn't understand why I couldn't let them. But then I finally understood it's because I wasn't meant to let the music go. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I believe in that. And, and you know, from reading about you, we're really interested in music early on. Yeah. You know, we share that in common. I actually always wanted to be an international rock star. Yes. And now you are. And Look at um, you. But when you can't sing, see, I didn't have any <laughs> other talent. And you come from a tone deaf family. <laughs> it doesn't, you have to go the doctor room. There you it's go. Like that's what happens. Now, how did the two of you meet? I've talked enough, Tara, you can yeah. tell me. Oh <laughs> so Tara, take it away. All right, so we met because I was a singer as well. So we, we understood each other because I was also following the path of yeah. medical school. I thought that was where I was going. So I was a bio major with a minor in theater. And then I was still singing on, I was doing my singing and I wound up getting a record deal and we wound up doing a show together in Miami. Mm. And so it was, it was basically love at first sight. Not really. No. So not Miami, for her. yes. So I we wrote your narrative. No, yeah, you know yeah. what? So it's funny. We met. Listen we listen met a year prior at the Bollywood Awards uh -huh. in New Jersey. Hated me. She it's did. It's a strong word, but I kind of did. Did you hey, really? Because you, you know, know what? what? She didn't actually get to talk to me. She because what had happened was she'd heard. Sorry, I'm interrupting. No, it's okay. He's gonna tell you why. Um. Within the Indian community, I had a very big name. Everybody uh, knew who yeah, I was yeah. pretty much around the world. Uh -huh. I was the only Indian pop star in the whole world. So yeah. she being Indian is so like... were you feeling it? Were he was like, feeling himself then. What? Come no, on. He was totally <laughs> feeling himself. I know, that. I, I know where you're coming from, Tara. So, and like, totally he, get it. he was like this little bad boy, Indian boy. Yeah. He, had this, he had highlights in his hair. His pants were falling off his bum. And I was like... What she's trying to say is I had swag. And she couldn't, <laughs> couldn't deal with the fact that how has this Indian guy got so much swag? Yeah. She's just a bit, little bit... Yeah, she's a little bit boggled. <laughs> It wasn't so we used took to feeling a photo like that. together. We did the photo op. Yeah. We took the photo. That was it. Okay. Yeah. And then we met about a year later uh -huh. at in Miami, and I still remember. I do remember the moment that he opened the door, and when he looked at me and he smiled, it was like, it, it was. It was a good. That Should was that was the love at first. Probably doing for the camera now. Should I? Yeah. Okay. I'm joking. That yeah. was the moment. Basically, he smiled. It, no, it was done. no. It was yeah. it was just one of those moments where it was refreshed. He had yeah. shaved his head. He looked different and his energy was different and uh -huh. we just had a whole new connection that time. Yeah. Yeah. It was nice. It was yeah. nice. I, what I think is so nice is that the two of you work together and so successfully and yeah. you tell me a little bit about the transition because you know really my fantasy it's but it's a fantasy. Mm. That's how you know the difference between something that you really really want passionately yeah. mm -hmm. and a fantasy and I tell this to my patients all the time. Yeah. If it's a wish if you're okay. totally okay with it not happening, oh, okay. you do absolutely nothing to make it happen, gotcha. which is me. Um, and I'm totally cool with it, but really, mm. you were partially in it. You were kind yeah, of in yeah, I was business. in it. I was in it. Most people <clears throat> don't let go of the entertainment business right. so yeah. easily. Yeah. So I was fully, fully in it. I mean, we traveled 
um, to Japan. I opened for Neo in Japan. I did toured you do Australia. Australia. We did. Um, we did a couple of songs. We did a duet together. Yeah. We, so I had, a, I had songs with John Legend. I had a song with Fabulous. Like, wow. I had so oh, much yeah. fun. And I have amazing, amazing memories. Yeah. But I hit that moment in my life where mm-hmm. I felt like <clears throat> I wasn't, it wasn't filling me up anymore. So I, interesting. It was just the business of it was taking away from my passion. Because the business mm. can be Because the business is hard. And as a female in the business, there's a lot of other things that we deal with. Mm-hmm. And I just got a little bit tired. Yeah. Mm. So um, I felt like my soul needed something else. And that's how I made the transition into yoga. Yoga had been that thing that was there for me. It was keeping me supported. I think we have a picture. We have Get Town with Tara. Oh, yeah. Look at that. And you actually own a yoga studio yeah. in New Jersey. Yeah. We have a family picture of you and Jay and your oh, gorgeous yeah. daughter, who has so much personality. Oh my gosh, Jesus! Did she give me a singer? Because I saw her with the microphone. I don't know. Okay, we don't Either know that. that or a comedian or something. I don't know. She's just so much so personality. Much personality. She's, uh, she's, it just jumps off the lovely. screen. Yeah. We have a picture of her with a crown. <laughs> oh, I love that one. I fell in love with that one. That was so cute. That was her third birthday. Oh, she's probably watching right now. Oh, yeah. Hi, so. Abe. Hi, Ava. Hi, yeah, we told her to watch. We told them to watch. Oh, we yeah. tried to get a video of you, but you'll come on next. Just Maybe in case you're you... talking to us, we can't hear you, babe. <laughs> Just in case you're screaming at the iPad, but we love you. And we're mentioning him, so you're yes. definitely getting some, some credit here. Um, so you decided to be a manager for your husband, mm-hmm. which for some, you know, people talk about mm-hmm. either people work well together yeah. Yeah. or not. And Absolutely. I totally get working together because, you know, my husband and I are in an adjacent office. Oh, he, he doesn't do the TV. He does right. the, just the psychiatry. Right. Mm-hmm. But the way I see it is you see life through the same lens. Yeah. We talk mm-hmm. the same language Yeah. and we get it, mm-hmm. you know, and, and you were telling a story on one podcast where mm-hmm. you were saying, Jay just got home from touring and he went to the fridge and he yeah. got it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, people, it's hard and he doesn't like to share about this side of things, but I feel for him. I feel for him. We are home. Some, you know, now we, I can't travel with him the way that I used to. So me and Ava are home. She's four years old now and he has to go on the road and he has to leave yeah. us. And that's hard, mm. yeah. you know, and I always say what it's like when you go out on the road and you, you perform to a huge on a huge stage and you've got thousands of people screaming yeah. and then you come back to the hotel room and it's quiet and you're alone. Yeah. And what that feels like, mm. you know, that's how, and then and you're so wise and, and we'll go into some of the, the principles that you kind of live by. Cause I think it is so wise and beyond your years actually. But Thank you. The fact that you have a balanced life because mm. there are many people on the stage and this is true in any entertainment business mm-hmm. where they know how to live life on the stage. Mm-hmm which is great. You get adoration, people love you, and it's off the stage that's challenging because mm-hmm. that's where all the difficulty really is. That's well, where, I suppose if you're not good on well, the stage. Well, that's where the majority of the time of your life right. is. You know right. what I mean? If you are only feeling alive when you're on stage for an hour and then the rest 23 hours of the day, you don't know who you are or right. you're searching adulation and yeah. you're constantly reading your comments to see what people think of you or don't you know, try. you're Googling yeah. yourself to see what people, I mean, that's a dangerous life. Yeah. And you know, I, I, it's cool if that works for, for somebody else. Right. Never I don't works. think, listen, Would I don't never, think that works for anyone. Nah, I think it's because dangerous, man. if you are too self-absorbed and too focused on it, it's like smoke and mirrors. It doesn't mm. really mean anything. It doesn't. It does and it doesn't. You yeah. know those people who really have your back. Yeah. And that's where you come in. Yeah. How did you learn how to be a manager? I, I wouldn't even know where to begin. Right. I think it was a, a transition, right? You fell into so, it naturally. Yeah. Right. It was a total transition. And obviously, I had all the background experience from doing it for myself mm-hmm. for so many years. And I just want to give props to your mom. So, Avon, your mom, yeah. is a very successful entrepreneur. Yeah. And actually, our family, my family and my sister's family, we can't live without her. This is a true story, Aww. just briefly. We were in Paris for my sister's 40th birthday, and Rainy's on the phone. I'm like, who are you on the phone with? I'm like, who are you on the phone with? She's like, Avon. She's like, I have IT problems. <laughs> my computer's a mess. So it was like, even in Paris, Rainy could not leave your mother alone. Uh-huh. But do you think? Having a mother who's a successful entrepreneur, somehow you absorb Oh my gosh, skills. 100%. Yeah. Well, first of all, I was on a computer from super, super young. 
So that gave me so much knowledge. Yeah. I, I'm able to always just figure it out. Yeah. Like, there's no program. I can't figure it out because mm. she always had me on the computer from so young. And how so patient young. is your mom? Super patient. Oh, my God. And then also, I think the biggest thing, she is here. That's why we're kind of all her, yeah, nodding she to her. Come she won't come on camera, but she's yeah. here. Um, the other thing about her is her work, her work ethic. Yeah. You know, and I see her with her clients to this day. And you know, it doesn't matter what time it is no. when someone reaches out. Right. She's there right. and she's not, she never does it from a negative space. No. She's, she, she serves. The, yeah. That's what she does. Yes. You know? And she that's does. just a wonderful role model. And yeah. I can tell that you're that way too, because you she got is, all the yeah. information to me. Yeah. And, oh, she's great like that. Oh my God. It was like, I was like, oh my See, God. See, those aren't my pleasure. strengths. Those aren't my strengths. And I know, I know yeah. that. Because because I'm such a creative person. Right. I have to be in a creative space. Yes. And if, if I start getting, if it's like, Tangled up with home stuff right. and invoices and this, Thanks that. Your, your I'm energy. like, what? Well, no, look, right now, I want to write a song about this and not worry about, you know, paying the plumber. It's <laughs> kind of like weird. So, like, you know, just like even on a home level, yeah. Tara's amazing. Like, she'll handle the little silly things that, like, you know, it gets in the way of my creative zone, and mm -hmm. she understands it. She's like, "Yeah, this is not really important, but what's important is you write some good songs." Yeah, that's right. You that's know? right. Are you the pragmatist in the relationship? The pragmatist. The pragmatist. The pragmatist. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. So I'm handling all the nitty gritty, all, all the, the detail. detail, and that probably works yeah. for you. And it does. And I'm, I'm a Capricorn. I'm a Capricorn. Yeah. It Capricorn. actually was. She likes getting things so. done. Like, check, check this off the list. This off the list. This off the list. And it's like. She loves it. It's, like, yeah. it's a good great balance. Works, you guys works. are the perfect balance. And that's balance. what it is. It's balance. It works. really is. Yeah. Now, what inspires you most when you're writing songs? Is there any place or person or it situation? It comes anywhere. Uh -huh. Anywhere. One thing I've, I've told myself never to do mm -hmm. is to, to wake up in the morning and go, today I'm going to write a song about this. And I go into the studio and go, no, I was meant to write a song about this. Mm -hmm. And now this music makes me feel another way. Yeah. Never do that. I go, I don't, I keep a clear, clear head. I wake up. If I know I'm going to the studio, I don't even think about what I'm going to write. I'll hear the music that the producer has made. And then I feel a certain way. If you know how to feel, yeah. you have to know how to feel. It's not, this is not a science. Music is not a science. It's all feeling. Yeah. You can't. And, and that's why it's so therapeutic. Yeah. I mean, why do you think a song a, can make you feel That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Can, can take you back. healing is a therapy session. Yeah. It really, especially the love songs. Why do you think people put on a song when they're sad? They want to cry, and right. a song they put on a sad song that will make them cry. Yeah, that is not science. That the, the person who wrote that and the, the singer who sang that, mm -hmm. it was all feeling. Yeah, you know what I mean. So for me, when I go into the studio, I listen to the music. What is this? How does this make me feel? Does it make me feel happy? Does it make me feel sad? Does it make me feel like celebrating? Does it make me want to dance? Does it make me want to tell somebody a deep story? What does it make me feel? And that's it. And then I go in there, I sit with my emotions, and then I start writing. Were you trained? No, okay, not so at all. Okay, so this is just natural. No, yeah. I don't think anybody can be trained to be a songwriter. I, I do not believe okay. it. You can, you, can, you can go into singing lessons, learn how to sing. You can't teach Some somebody. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> okay, I digress. No, go ahead. You go can't, ahead. you can't. You can't. You can't learn how to be a song. It's yeah. in you. It's, it's just, in you. it's in you. Yeah. When did you realize you were a success and that your partnership, the way you designed it, really you were onto something special? Um, I mean, to be honest, it, I, I... And there's your wedding picture. Oh, oh my God, God yeah. It's so beautiful. Yeah. How many years ago was that? It's going to be know. nine years in wow. August. Wow. Yeah, that's mad. Nice. Um... I'm a big believer in, in, in intuition, my intuition. Uh -huh. I follow my gut with everything. If something tells me no, I don't even question it. My mind, I do not let my mind get involved. Because mm -hmm. the mind is a scary thing. You know yeah, this, yeah. right? Um, it's all intuition. So even when I met Tara, she was in, living in New York and I was living in, in England. We had a connection. Did you have a long distance relationship for a yeah. while? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's so now, hard. what would the logic tell you? What would logic and other people tell you? Hey, man, what are you doing? Why are you wasting time? It's long distance. It's overseas. It's so hard. Or just it's never going to work. Like a rock star. Right. right. Exactly. Oh, and right. even that. Right. Yeah. All those things. Yeah. So I don't go necessarily with logic with, with, with those kind of decisions. Yeah. Yeah. I go with what my, my gut tells me. My gut was telling me, nah, you need to go over there. You need to keep going over there. And I did. And then I ended up working with her producer because remember, she was singing at the time. Yeah. And her producer is the one who ended up 
me and him made three albums together and we still work together. Had I not met her, I wouldn't have met him. I wouldn't have had the number one hits that I had. And it's all because I followed my gut. I, I'll tell you, I, yeah. you blew me away because I was listening to a podcast you recently did called Unplo or Unstoppable. Mm -hmm. Unstoppable. And what really blew me away was just how wise the two of you are. Thank you. Um, and accepting just understanding cause and effect. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you talked about some of the things that really worked in terms of your business yeah. mm -hmm. and relationship and um, adjusting expectations. Yeah, man. Huge. That was something you talked yeah. about. Yeah. I was really, I couldn't get enough of what you were saying. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Um, it's something I've learned across the board in all of my relationships and it's huge, I think, in marriage. Yeah. And I think people <laughs> don't, you know, they don't pay attention enough, right. but we put such high expectations on each other. I have a very high bar of what I expect of myself, but I can't put that bar on everyone else. Mm. I don't know what you expect, you know? Mm. It's not fair, so I'm expecting something of you, and then when you don't show up and do it, I'm disappointed, I'm angry, I'm let down. Yeah. But guess what, that other person didn't even know they did any of those things. And they didn't even know where your bar was. Right. right. So how can they reap that expectation if they don't know where you put that bar for them? And what I thought was amazing, Jay, is that you said, listen, if I hired somebody mm. and they underperformed, right. well, that's on me because right. I chose them. I was like, oh my right. God, you don't even need therapy. Right. Right? <laughs> you have no need for me at all. Right. Uh, because that's so advanced because most people play the victim right. and say, why me? Yeah. I thought they were X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. How'd you get to this unique space? I don't, I don't know. Uh, I, I, <laughs> it's honestly, the A's in biology, right? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know what it is. It's like I said, it's just, uh, um, it's a, it's a way that I've lived my life and it's common sense to me, but it's not necessarily common sense to others. Not, so when yeah. my friends talk to me and they're saying all this stuff in my head, it makes complete, it's yeah. so clear and yeah. I can't understand why they're so foggy. And, uh, sometimes like, I'll just tell them, I'm like, you know, the same thing that you just said, you know, about what I had told you about, uh, if it's, it's on me. I claim responsibility for all, all of my actions. Um, I'd never take that role as in like, it's easier to put the blame on someone else. That's very spiritual. Do you think you're I, I am quite a spiritual, that yeah. Because that's a very spiritual principle. Like you're in a far better position if you take 100% yeah. responsibility. Because yeah. then you can do something but, about it. Exactly. That's super scary to people. Oh. And that's what I deal with with my students. Because oh. to say that they are controlling through their thoughts and through their words and through yeah. their actions, what's happening, that's putting the onus on you. It's easier to put it on everyone else. Right. Yeah. So when things are falling apart and things aren't going well and they're going, no, it's all them. Right. It's much scarier to say, no, well, what did I do? Right. And that's really the, what therapy is about. What's the right. connection between you and what your life looks like? Yeah. Right. And how can you do something to, to, to impact it. your life and yeah. shift it? And also if you see patterns emerging, right. you've got to kind of go, point. what's the common factor here? Right. Oh me <laughs> right yes, exactly so uh, yeah. you know that's that's how i always look at it and also if you're putting the blame or the whatever on everybody else and you're like oh this isn't working it must be that for it must be, you can't actually fix it right. there's too many it. variables right. and so you, you don't, don't know what people. exactly you know you know and it's hard enough to change even when you want to yeah i want to get to, to some of the other brilliant sure, sure, things sure. which i i put down Appreciating the small successes, yeah, which I that's think so is important. also huge, because mm -hmm. sometimes people think oh, God. success is this one big thing, but... That is the biggest thing that I live by, mm -hmm. the biggest to this day. And you know how I learned that? Mm -hmm. I learned that through, unfortunately, having so much success and having regret mm -hmm. that I didn't stop at certain moments to soak it up. Mm -hmm. I know. And it's only because it's I can say yeah. that because I've been through it. So this is not some sort of thingy, that spiritual thing I'm saying. I've been through it. So I talk to these other artists who I'm working with and I go, listen, take me as your big brother. I've been there, mate. Anything yeah. that you want. Madison Square Garden, done it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Wembley Stadium, done it. Yeah. This, that and the other, done it. Guess what? You haven't yet. So please don't make the same mistake yeah. I did. Don't miss it. Don't miss don't those small. I remember yeah. there was a classic moment. I was performing at MSG. It was my first time and it was a Z100 ball, Jingle Ball. And my DJ happened to play the song a little faster than it should have, the music. Mm -hmm. So I had to sing a little faster and sing a little higher. And nobody else knew, I knew. Yeah. I got back 
everyone was ecstatic. There were 20,000 people singing at the top of their lungs my words that I wrote. And what did I do? I got back and I got mad at my DJ mm. because I was like, dude, what were you doing, man? Why did you play? And I was like, I totally ruined the moment for myself. I should have just gone, look what, look what you just did, Jay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I've only learned, you can only learn that through going through these moments. Yeah, so all I say down. now is yeah. live in the moment. You can't control what's happening tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Don't sweat it. Make a plan, sure. But live it, soak this moment and up. And you'll feel better. You'll yeah. feel better if you can appreciate the small successes. Yeah. You also talk about just the realities of being a superstar. Mm -hmm and how to handle rejection mm -hmm. and develop a thick skin mm -hmm. in the music business but in the entertainment business mm -hmm. period what's your what's your strategy <laughs> i remember I, first time i ever uh learned that i can't take anything too seriously and other people's opinions before there was social media and before there were comments and all that there were forums i don't mm -hmm. know if you can, remember, remember i've been forums. in this for 15 years and I started before social media. Right. 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 So, listen, there were the forums fire. on people's yeah. websites. Yeah. I remember when I first came out 15 years ago, I had my website, then I had the forum where fans would talk. And I went, I'm curious. What do people think? What do people think about my yeah. song? What do people think about my video? And I was a couple of girls saying, oh, this is hot, and this, that, and the other, and nice things. And I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, <laughs> I'm feeling myself. And then this one person just wrote, his face looks like a monkey's backside. <gasps> and I went, it's not very really nice, is it? <laughs> Why would you? What did I do wrong to you? But in that moment, yeah. I laughed and went, God, anyone could say anything. Oh, yeah. Who even mm -hmm. cares? Mm -hmm. For as many people who might think you're hot, there's people who think oh, you yeah. never look twice. For any people who think you are the best voice in the world, other people think you can't sing. It doesn't matter. Right. I am not putting my happiness in those right. little comments yeah. of some 12 year old who's hiding behind his computer. Yeah. Uh, no. Or really, who's envious? So they would rather attack yeah. you than yeah, attack themselves. Yeah, it's usually whatever's going on. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I really just, you know, you, you've got to. It depends where you place your happiness. So true. So true. And if your values are correct, mm -hmm. then you can bounce back yeah. that much quicker. Absolutely. Um, we do something called the quick five. Okay. So I'm gonna, you know, you both can answer, right, and then go we're gonna it. talk about the charity that you chose and why you chose it. We'll okay. get to that at the end of the show. Um, but we do quick five because I'm a therapist and I'm nosy. I mean, <laughs> basically, that's the truth. Okay. What does your perfect day look like? Okay, well, perfect day first starts with um, no alarm, wake up. Oh, God. That's <laughs> yes, a good one. that's nice. Doesn't mean we have to sleep late. But you're going to have a second job. Wake up. Uh, <laughs> no alarm, wake up. That's a good one. Yeah. That's How about one. you? Uh, perfect day. I love being around my family. Mm -hmm. I love that. Uh, family, best friends. I'd say that barbecues, good conversation, good music, some good drinks, some good food. Uh, and having just a great time with the people I love. That's just literally my favorite yeah, thing. Yeah, that's world. perfect. Yeah. Who are your heroes? My hero is my, uh, my, my parents, 100%. I know uh -huh. it's cliche, but it's, you know, it, my dad, I, I know this is meant to be quick fire. I'm terrible at this. No, um, that's good. My dad taught me two things. He said two things and they stuck with me forever. Mm. Um, think about it. I quit medicine to be a singer, right? Mm -hmm. Crazy to some people. Um, I went all the way to America to marry a girl who lives in the States. Crazy to some people. But my dad said, he said, listen, there's two choices you're going to make in your life for yourself. And you have to make them yourself, your career and your life partner, because mm -hmm. you're the one who lives with both of them forever. So brilliant. And that was it. Yeah. Yeah. He gave you really good advice. Yeah. Do, do they miss you since they're in London? Oh, uh, yeah, a lot. I mean, I but we, you know, we talk all the time. Yeah. We talk every day. Thank God. I mean, yeah. that's where technology is really cool. It is. Amazing. It can yeah. you it so is. quickly. Okay. Um, what can you do now that you could not do a year ago? Oh my goodness! What can I do? Probably some some different arm balances and yoga. <laughs> no, that's hard because right? really you should see me doing yoga on the yeah. floor, doing nothing, right? <laughs> and just barely breathing. Right. What does success look like to you? Do you want to answer this, or we can both answer it? We can start. Yeah. Success to me is knowing that. Um, this might sound, it's not meant to sound egotistical, mm -hmm. it, but it's how I look at the world. Um, did I take advantage of my position, the gift that, that I've been given in the right way? Mm -hmm. Did I impact people in the right way? Did, did, did I do one thing 
to change one person's life in a positive way for them to go, thank God, Jay Sean even existed. Yeah. That's all, I don't care about anything. I want to make a positive impact and yeah. I want people to go, thank God that dude got signed. Thank God he did some music. Like, well, you already are making that's, that uh, impact. Thank you. And I know you will continue yeah. to. So that's to me is success. Yep. Yeah. That's why I married him. Yeah. We're, that's, see, that's the moment though. Yeah. Like that's the moment where we go, we're on the He's, same page. Cause that's the same, my goal. It's the same. The same. Yeah. The, you guys are, and I love when you talk about your Instagram, like think from purpose. Yeah. yeah. You know, and as long as you're thinking from purpose, you're on the right page. Yeah. What question would you ask a fortune teller? <laughs> I wouldn't go to one. I know. Ever. I would ask her when I'm going to lose weight. Oh, please. <laughs> anyway, I want to mention, and we have a little gift for you, Sean. Oh, thank so, you. Tallorder.com, which has the, the most rad socks, a lot of superstar sports people okay. own it. This is specifically for you with your size, size uh, nine. Right? There you go. Okay, okay. All right. Well, they are, they are also a company that um, is into fashion, but purpose, and they give to back to the community and the charities. That's and so nice. They are giving a portion of whatever is sold with the promo code jayshawn awesome to, uh, their uh, portion of the proceeds is going to the charity of your choice mm -hmm. would you like to tell us about sure. the charity okay. so we chose um chico's nonprofit. So this is for you thank you okay. and thank you tallorder.com yeah. yeah. girls can wear them too i've worn them Okay. Hey. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So we've seen the socks. They're, They're wrapped They're up. really cute. Um, yeah. So we chose Chico's nonprofit because it's a family charity. Our cousins actually run it. And it's nice to know where your funds are going. Yeah. They do a trip every June. We send them with barrels and barrels of goodies. Um, they go, they take books, they take backpacks, all the things that the kids need to go to school, the basics, right? To help these kids to make sure they're getting educated. Um, my cousin is a nurse practitioner. She also goes and does medical treatment wow. and brings a whole team to do diabetes testing. People just need education, right? right? And education empowers. And yeah. you have a great love of children. And I that's where children. you put a big focus yeah. of your time and energy. 100%. We'll continue to do so. And so we're just so grateful that you chose a charity that's yeah. close to your heart. Yeah. And tallorder.com yeah, is thrilled that they can them. contribute. So Buy some socks, people. Yes, buy some right. socks. Tallorder.com, and thank Eat you so socks. much for coming. Thank you for having me. I'm going to have you sing oh, yeah? while I try okay. to do yoga. Right? <laughs> and it's going to be really good. Yeah, we're really we'll good. go viral. Right, we're going to go viral. <laughs> it's going to be huge, local, local people. Love it. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. We're actually going to be back on Thursday, and um, we'll see you soon on Talking Live. Take care, guys. Bye. Thank you.